Good morning, friends. Welcome to our bonus read aloud of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Even though I said that last video, the last video that I recorded would be the last one, this one actually will be the last one. There are only a few pages left in the last chapter. And Dumbledore just explained um, everything that happened in the dungeon to him. And then he accidentally ate an earwax flavored jelly bean. So, let's finish this book. Madame Pomfrey the nurse was a nice woman, but very strict. Just five minutes, Harry pleaded. Absolutely not. You let Dumbled Professor Dumbledore in. Well, of course, that was the headmaster. Quite different. You need rest. I am resting. Look, lying down and everything. Oh, go on, Madame Pomfrey. Oh, very well, she said, but five minutes only. And she let Ron and Hermione in. Harry! Hermione looked ready to fling her arms around him again, but Harry was glad she held herself in as his head was still very sore. Oh, Harry, we were sure you were going to. Dumbledore was so worried. The whole school's talking about it, said Ron. What really happened? It was one of those rare occasions when the true story is even more strange and exciting than the wild rumors. Harry told them everything. Quirrell, the mirror, the stone, and Voldemort. Ron and Hermione were a very good audience. They gasped in all the right places. And when Harry told them what was under Quirrell's turban, Hermione screamed out loud. So the stone's gone, said Ron finally. Flamel's just going to die? That's what I said. But Dumbledore thinks that, what was it? To the well-organized mind, death is but the next great adventure. I always said he was off his rocker, said Ron, looking quite impressed at how crazy his hero was. So what happened to you two, said Harry. Said Harry. Well, I got back all right, said Hermione. I brought Ron round, that took a while, and we were dashing up to the Owlery to contact Dumbledore when we met him at the entrance hall. He already knew. He just said, Harry's gone after him, hasn't he? And hurtled off to the third floor. Do you think he meant you to do it, said Ron, sending you your father's cloak and everything? Well, Hermione exploded, if he did, I mean to say, that's terrible. He could have been killed. No, it isn't, said Harry thoughtfully. He's a funny man, Dumbledore. I think he sort of wanted to give me a chance. I think he knows more or less everything that goes on here, you know. I reckon he had a pretty good idea we were try going to try, and instead of stopping us, he just taught us enough to help. I don't think it was an accident he let me find out how the mirror worked. It's almost like he thought I had the right to face Voldemort if I could. Yeah, Dumbledore's off his rocker, all right, said Ron proudly. Listen, you've got to be up for the end of your feast tomorrow. The points are all in, and Slytherin won, of course. You missed the last Quidditch match. We were steamrolled by Ravenclaw without you. But the food will be good. At that moment, Madame Pomfrey bust bustled over. You've had nearly 15 minutes. Now out, she said firmly. After a good night's sleep, Harry felt nearly back to normal. I want to go to the feast, he told Madame Pomfrey as she straightened his many candy boxes. I can, can't I? Professor Dumbledore says you are to be allowed to go, she said sniffily, as though in her opinion, Professor Dumber Dumbledore didn't realize how risky feasts could be. And you have another visitor. Oh, good, said Harry. Who is it? Hagrid sidled through the door as he spoke. As usual, when he was indoors, Hagrid looked too big to be allowed. He sat down next to Harry, took one look at him, and burst into tears. It's all my fault, he sobbed, his face in his hands. I told the evil git how to get past Fluffy. I told him it was the only thing he didn't know. And I told him you could have died. And for a dragon egg, I'll never talk again. I should be chucked out and made to live as a muggle. Hagrid, said Harry. Shocked to see ha Hagrid shaking with grief and remorse. Great tears leaking down into his beard. Hagrid, he'd have found out somehow. This is Voldemort we're talking about. He'd have found out even if... You hadn't told him. You could have died, sobbed Hagrid, and don't say the name. Voldemort, Harry bellowed, and Hagrid was so shocked he stopped crying. I've met him, and I'm calling him by his name. Please cheer up, Hagrid. We saved the stone. It's gone. He can't use it. Have a chocolate frog. I've got loads. Hagrid wiped his nose on the back of his hand and said, That reminds me. I've got you, I got you a present. It's not a stoat sandwich, is it? Said Hagrid, er, said Harry anxiously. And at last, Hagrid gave a weak chuckle. Nah, Dumbledore gave me the day off yesterday to fix it. 
Of course, he should have sacked me instead. Anyway, I got you this. Seemed to be a handsome leather-covered book. Harry opened it curiously. It was full of wizard photographs, smiling and waving at him from every page were his mother and father. Sent elves off to all your parents' old school friends, asking for photos. Knew you didn't have any. Do you like it? Harry couldn't speak, but Hagrid understood. Harry made his way down to the end of year feast alone that night. He had been held up by Madame Pomfrey's fussing about, insisting on giving him one last check. So the great hall was near already full. It was decked out in the Slytherin colors of green and silver to celebrate Slytherins winning the House Cup for the seventh year in a row. A huge banner showing the Slytherin serpent covered the wall behind the high table. When Harry walked in there, in there was a sudden hush, and then everybody started talking loudly at once. He slipped into a seat between Ron and Hermione at the Gryffindor table and tried to ignore the fact that people were standing up to look at him. Fortunately, Dumbledore arrived moments later. The babble died away. Another year gone, Dumbledore said cheerfully, and I must trouble you with an old man's wheezing waffle before we sink our teeth into our delicious feast. What a year it has been. Hopefully your heads are all a little fuller than they were. You have the whole summer again to get them nice and empty before next year starts. Now, as I understand it, the house cup here needs awarding, and the points stand thus. In fourth place, with Gryffindor with 312 points, in third, Hufflepuff, Hufflepuff with 352, Ravenclaw has 426, and Slytherin 472. A storm of cheering and stamping broke out from the Slytherin table. Harry could see Draco Malfoy banging his goblet on the table. It was a sickening sight. Yes, yes, well done, Slytherin, said Dumbledore. However, recent events must be taken into account. The room went very still. The Slytherin's smiles faded a little. Ahem, said Dumbledore. I have a few last-minute points to dish out. Let me see. Yes. First, to Mr. Ronald Weasley. Ron went purple in the face. He looked like a radish with a bad sunburn. For the best-played game of chess Hogwarts has ever seen, I award Gryffindor, I award Gryffindor House 50 points. Gryffindor cheers and nearly raised the bewitched ceiling. The stars overhead seemed to quiver. Percy could be heard telling the other prefects, My brother, you know, my youngest brother, got past McGonagall's giant chess set. At last there was si silence again. Second, to Miss Hermione Granger, for the use of cool logic in the face of fire. I award Gryffindor House 50 points. Hermione buried her face in her arms. Harry strongly suspected she had burst into tears. Gryffindors up and down the table were beside themselves. They were a hundred points up. Third, to Mr. Harry Potter, said Dumbledore. The room went deadly quiet. For pure nerve and outstanding courage, I award Gryffindor House 60 points. The din was deafening. There, those who could add up while yelling themselves hoarse knew that Gryffindor now had 472 points, exactly the same as Slytherin. They had tied for the house cup. If only Dumbledore had given Harry just one more point. Dumbledore raised his hand. The room gradually fell silent. There are all kinds of courage, said Dumbledore, smiling. It takes a great deal of bravery to stand up to our enemies, but just as much to stand up to our friends. I therefore award ten points to Mr. Neville Longbottom. Someone standing outside the Great Hall might well have thought some sort of explosion had taken place. So loud was the noise that erupted from Gryffindor table. Harry, Ron, and Hermione stood up to yell and cheer as Neville, white with shock, disappeared under a pile of people hugging him. He had never won it so much as a point for Gryffindor before. Harry, still cheering, nudged Ron in the ribs and pointed to Malfoy, who couldn't have looked more stunned and horrified if he just had the body bind curse put on him. Which means, Dumbledore called over the storm of applause, for even Ravenclaw and Hufflepuff were celebrating the downfall of Slytherin, we need a little change of decoration. He clapped his hands, and in an instant the green hangings became scarlet and the silver became gold. The huge Slytherin serpent vanished and a towering Gryffindor lion took its place. Snape was shaking Professor McGonagall's hand with a horrible forced smile. He caught Harry's eye, and Harry knew at once that Snape's feeling toward him 
hadn't changed one jot. This didn't worry Harry. It seemed as though life would be back to normal next year, or as normal as it ever was at Hogwarts. It was the best evening of Harry's life, better than winning at Quidditch or Christmas or knocking out mountain trolls. He would never, ever forget tonight. Harry had almost forgotten that the exam results were still to come, but come they did. To their great surprise, both he and Ron passed with good marks. Hermione, of course, had the best grades of the first years. Even Neville scraped through, his good herbology mark making up for his abysmal potions one. They had ho hoped that Goyle, who was almost as stupid as he was mean, might be thrown out, but he had passed too. It was a shame, but as Ron said, you couldn't have everything in life. And suddenly, their wardrobes were empty, their trunks were packed, Neville's toad was found lurking in the, a corner of the toilets. Notes were handed out to all students, warning them not to use magic over the holidays, I always hope they'll forget to give us these, said Fred Weasley sadly. Hagrid was there to take them down to the fleet of boats that sailed across the lake. They were boarding the Hogwarts Express, talking and laughing as the countryside became greener and tidier, eating Bertie Bot's every flavor of beans as they sped past Muggle Towns, pulling off their wizard robes and putting on jackets and coats, pulling into platform nine and three quarters at King's Cross Station. It took quite a while for them all to get off the platform. A wise and old guard was up by the ticket barrier, letting them go through the gate in twos and threes so they didn't attract attention by all bursting out of a solid wall at once and alarming the muggles. You must come and stay this summer, said Ron. Both of you. I'll send you an owl. Thanks, said Harry. I'll need something to look forward to. People jostled them as they moved forward toward the gateway back to the muggle wor world. Some of them called, Goodbye, Harry. See you, Potter. Still famous, said Ron, grinning at him. Not where I'm going, I promise you, said Harry. He, Ron, and Hermione passed through the gateway together. There he is, Mom. There he is. Look. It was Ginny Weasley, Ron's younger sister, but she wasn't pointing at Ron. Harry Potter, she squealed. Look, Mom, I can see. Be quiet, Ginny, and it's rude to point. Mrs. Weasley smiled down at them. Busy year, she said. Very, said Harry. Thanks for the fudge in the sweater, Mrs. Weasley. Oh, it was nothing, dear. Ready, are you? It was Uncle Vernon, still purple-faced, still mustache, still looking furious at the nerve of Harry, carrying an owl in a cage in a station full of ordinary people. Behind him stood Aunt Petunia and Dudley, looking terrified at the very sight of Harry. "'You must be Harry's family,' said Mrs. Weasley. "'In a manner of speaking,' said Uncle Vernon. "'Hurry up, boy, we haven't got all day.' He walked away. Harry hung back for the a last word with Ron and Hermione. "'See you over the summer, then.' Hope you have uh, a good holiday, said Hermione, looking uncertainly after Uncle Vernon, shocked that anyone could be so unpleasant. Oh, I will, said Harry, and they were surprised at the grin that was spreading over his face. They don't know we're not allowed to use magic at home. I'm going to have lots of fun with Dudley this summer. And friends, that is the end of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Um, I hope you all enjoyed it, and if you want there is there are six more books in the series so if you are interested and you can get to the library the second book will be there for you all right my friends i hope you all have an awesome summer and i can't wait to see you all in the fall bye friends